So this week we are celebrating Easter. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I forget what Easter is all about. I mean, not to say that I, I don't remember the gospel, but I think I, I forget the power of the gospel. The power of, of everything that takes place. And so I want to pose the question today, what does Easter mean to you? So maybe for some of you, Easter means, uh, it simply means, well, there's, there's an Easter bunny, there's gifts involved. That's what our family does. That's the, that's the extent of, of your celebration of Easter. You, you hunt eggs um, with candy inside, you get gifts from your parents, and it's awesome, and you love it. And maybe that's the extent of, of what Easter is, but, but really that's not what, what Easter is about although it is a part of most of our celebrations. It was part of some part of my celebration. I always got a, a chocolate egg and, um, I mean, sorry, not a chocolate egg. I got a chocolate bunny and, uh, and I hunted eggs um, with, with my family. Um, but then uh, that's really not what it's about. But maybe you can't, you've come to uh, Easter services at a church. And so you heard... Uh, about Jesus raising from the dead. You maybe uh, attended a kid's ministry at a church and you uh, made a craft that represented the empty tomb, the empty grave. And you thought, well, this is what it's about. And, and, it, and it is. That's definitely part of what Easter is. That's, that's really the celebration of Jesus rising from the grave. But before we get there, we have to understand that in order for Jesus to raise from the dead, um, he first had to die. And so the process of us getting to the, gr- the, the empty tomb uh, is part of the Easter story. It's part of what uh, we celebrate. You see, the full picture is that Jesus was mocked, that Jesus fulfilled prophecies in the Bible, that the, the different things in the Bible, the, the different uh, details are really there because of the prophecies that led to the crucifixion, that led to the empty tomb, that pointed to the fact that Jesus was indeed the Son of God. There are details like um, the mocking of Jesus, where, where the men that crucified him um, put a crown of thorns on his head, wrapped a purple robe, which meant royalty, in a mocking way as, he, as they led him to the cross, he was whipped and beaten. And the thing was, he wasn't headed for death. Um, his life was anything but headed for death. He lived a perfect and sinless life, unlike you and me. That if we were to be put on trial, it would be clear that even if we weren't uh, going to have the death sentence, um, if, if, they, if somebody wanted to read all the things that we had done wrong or uh, go as far as the, a creepy thing like reading off the scroll of our brains and all the, the nasty thoughts that we've had in our lives, that, that the reality is we'd be guilty of, of something. But for Jesus, he wasn't guilty of a thing. If you were to scroll through the, the, the brain of Jesus and, and that same exact uh, thing happened, uh, it would be blameless in every single way. And that's the difference. That's what makes Easter different. Because he's the Son of God. And Easter means that we are set free. Easter is what sets us free. That Jesus died so that you don't have to be perfect anymore. That there, there are, there's a penalty for our sin. And that penalty is death. Believe it or not, um, that's, the, that's the reality. And so the, the beauty of Easter is that we are set free from that penalty. And so I'm going to read to you guys uh, a story from right after Jesus comes back from, from the dead. He, uh, his friend Mary arrives, Mary Magdalene arrives at the empty tomb and she discovers something. She discovers an empty tomb 
But she doesn't know what to think because she doesn't know that Jesus has risen from the grave yet. And so I want to read this, this story to you. This story from John 20, starting in verse 11. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and she wept. She stooped to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, and she turned right then, and she, she recognized it was Jesus' voice, and she said, Rabbani, which means teacher. And Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. And Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he had said these things to her. You see, Jesus comforted his friend Mary. He came to her in her time of need, and he brought her comfort. And the thing, the, the thing that I want to pose to you as you think about what Easter means and, and what it means to be set free, what, uh, not only do I want you to, to think about what you have been set free from, but then also what does a relationship with Jesus mean? That Jesus, despite being mocked, despite being rejected, despite going through all these things for you, and then raising to life for you, for us. Um, he didn't just say, well, it's your decision now. It's all on you. But he actually came back to life and then he visited those who were with him. And he invites you into the same type of relationship. That my invitation for you today, if you have not accepted Jesus, is to do that now. Figure out what's getting in the way of, of that pure relationship and make the choice, make the decision now to follow him.